Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm here today to hopefully discuss affordable housing and construction. My name is Amin Abdel Qadr. I'm in the United States. I was born in Egypt, immigrated to the US, and my background is about 30 plus, maybe 35 years of construction. It's my passion, the love of my life. I love it. I've been at it for all these years. And about 10 years ago, I went to Egypt looking on how I can give something back from all my knowledge I've gained all these years. And I discovered that Egypt needed help with affordable housing. So I decided I'm gonna come back and start figuring out how I can overcome or help them overcome that issue. When I came back to the US, I set a team together and we decided to start researching and looking at affordable housing. What is wrong with it? What is right with it? How to get it, how to move it, looking at the business philosophy, looking at everything till we can come up with a system that can actually help a lot of people increase the production and increase the number of affordable homes and house people. And with us going into almost 3 billion homes deficiency by 2030, according to the World Bank report, that's a serious issue that we need to address seriously and people can no longer ignore it. So one of the things we did four years ago, we developed the seven pillar building system. It's a system that actually forces you to look at all the different elements that are important to a human being in the building and to always make sure those elements are part of the construction. The seven pillar building system is always looking at the sustainability, affordability, uh, accessibility, the healthiness, the safety, the energy efficiency, and the comfort. We look at how the weather has been changing. People have been changing elements. There's a lot of changes, a lot of costs, a lot of new technology. So the main thing we looked at is sustainability. What is sustainability? And we decided really sustainability, that means I can take a product, I can produce it without causing a lot of harm to the environment and people. A product that's gonna last for a long time, I can pass it on to my multiple generations, uh, build a sustainable house that can has a lifespan of two, three times the length of today's homes being built. Uh, the affordability we realize that that is also a critical point because it doesn't mean you have to have money to have comfort, to have safety. There is a way in the business model and in the product selection to actually put something together that can be given to a person, a family at a cost effective price. The accessibility we saw over the years here in the US mainly, but I'm sure it reflects a lot of areas, is that the handicap accessibility. People pay a lot of extra money because nobody's building things as a standard to work for handicap accessible for people. So we thought that was a real issue to look at and address. The other thing is the healthy. Today, our homes are not healthy. Our homes have a lot of voids in them voids end up with a lot of temperature changes and the comfort of temperature. So have a comfortable temperature inside. I either need to warm up my home or I need to cool it. Depends on what the elements and the temperature is outside. Once those two temperatures collide with each other, as we know, hot air and cold air, when they collide, it creates rain. We're creating moisture. Moisture in dark places will create mildew and mold. When that dries, the spores become airborne. We breed all that. Breeding that is not good for our immune system. It's not good for our lungs. So healthy had to be a criteria that we had to list as one of the seven pillars in building. Safe, we looked at how much disaster and things that are happening in the world that are destroying structures and destroying houses, making people homeless again, putting people out in the street, the cost associated with it is phenomenal. People don't realize it. I know here in Texas, we're on the Gulf. The city of Houston has hurricanes come in. 
it destroys thousands, tens of thousands. Midwest uh, United States has tornadoes, Tornado Alley. It goes and it just devastates town after town. Those people, it devastates their lives. The cost is horrendous. Insurance companies are paying in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to each family to rebuild their homes. And yet, it doesn't really rebuild their lives. It destroys their lives. The energy efficiency is another pillar that is very important because today, with the temperature changes, people are dependent on a lot of mechanical systems. Mechanical systems to cool and heat their homes and electronics are using up electricity. I've seen a lot of countries, US included, Egypt included, we're doing power outages, we're cutting power. Just to be able to take the load off the grid, we can't build these multi-billion dollar, multi-million dollar electric facilities to produce enough electricity. So we have to look at the energy efficiency and start looking at the back of what we used to do to live in comfort with all this new, without the new technology and the high tech equipment, air conditioning and refrigeration and all that kind of stuff. We live just fine, people lived. So we have to go back. So part of our business that we've put together, which our company now, the new company is called Integrated Holistic Builder. We look at integrating old technology, new technology, integrate the right pieces together to create a holistic structure that everything is working together as one to give the home and the family the benefits. Every person in this world deserves the right to raise his family, protected from the element, protected from anything, and raise them in a healthy environment. Today, we're not doing that. Unfortunately, we've seen around the world landfill cities. We've seen cemetery cities. People are desperate to have housing. So we developed the seven pillar system. And in developing some of these plans, we started looking at the construction types around the world. And we discovered that they're not so different from each other. We are trying maybe to use local products. So sometimes there's a little bit of difference, but we basically can do the same thing. We can actually design a structure just like we design a car and I can go get a, a BMW and I can drive it in Saudi Arabia, I can drive it in China, I can drive it in Alaska, and I can drive it in the United States, North and South United America. So why can't we develop a house? So that's what the seven pillar system came about, that we can actually put a structure together that is easily put in different environments and different areas of the world, and we can offer to people a good, affordable, healthy, safe, energy conscious, home to live in. So we have that product that we found, which is insulated concrete forms. Insulated concrete form is a styrofoam block that we use as a building block to actually pour concrete in place and build load bearing concrete walls and concrete roofs with very high energy efficiency. So we decided that is going to be our shell. This is how we're going to build all our shells. They're going to be insulated concrete form shells. We're going to build that. That's going to be the core. We can do it anywhere. One of the good things about it is as a raw material, it can be transported very cheaply because once it's expanded, it expands 90 times its original size. So that means for every truck or every container of raw foam I'm shipping, I can expand it to make 90 truckloads or 90 container loads. That means I can ship a lot of homes in very small spaces. And in looking at a business model in most businesses, we have two line items in our financial that can hurt us, break us, or put us out of business. And that is logistics and labor. Labor is very hard control and logistics is a very hard number to keep a firm number on your books and it's hard to control and that can put a lot of companies and it has put a lot of companies out of business labor icf we discovered that it's very easy to train people to have the labor force trained very quickly we've been training people during the summer for summer interns for college students from overseas it's been taking about six to eight weeks 
we can start teaching them the product, teach them how to use it, get them out on a job and actually build a structure that actually gets used by families and people. So that's a very short learning curve. So that's a great step. So we decided why not? Now, the other thing is by learning how to integrate the right products together, now we can shorten the time of doing these structures instead of four or six months or instead of a year to build a five-story building in the Middle East, let's say, or in Egypt, now we can cut 30% of that time. That overhead is a great amount of money that can be saved. It allows the builder to make his money, allows the finance companies and the mortgage companies to still sell and make money and make profit, yet it brings the cost down for the consumer to be able to afford the home that they need for their family. The other thing is the shipping now becomes local. When I ship raw material and manufacture the product locally, that helps. So it helps in cost of logistics. Now I use local people. We're manufacturing local products and that can be done anywhere in the world. And when I'm shipping at 90 or even 50% less in size and weight, then I saved a lot in my logistics cost. So we hope that kind of opens up your eyes to look at the affordable housing. And I look forward to talking to anybody about it and the strategical side of it and how it can help a lot of people. But we really need to start looking at this issue very seriously because it's getting to be a big problem. And a lot of people are gonna get hurt. A lot of people are gonna die from being outside in the elements. Thank you for joining me and uh, I hope I started something that great things will come out of it in the future. Thank you.